Welcome to In Depth. Well, is girl violence on the increase or is it that it's now being reported so we're more aware? Later in the show, educator Martin Elliott joins us. But up first, is there more to life? As author Catherine Oliver says in her book, Invitation to Life, or should we be content? The facts are. The Bible Society survey in March to June 2008 showed 46% of New Zealanders describe themselves as Christians, so that means we have 1,955,000 Christians, 15% attend a church at least once a week, 20% a month, uh, once a month or more, 68% own a Bible, 11% read it daily, 13% read it weekly, 25% stated the teachings of the Bible does influence their lives. Author Catherine Oliver joins us now. Welcome to the show, Catherine. Thank you. Okay, so you believe that the teachings of Jesus have, that people have been confused by them. Why is that? Well, because there are so many ideas about Jesus and about Christianity and so many denominations, I sometimes wonder which church Jesus would belong to if he were to come. Um, there's debate about the origins of the Bible, about the existence or otherwise of God. Um, some people think that religion or is belief is a purely personal matter, a spiritual matter. Others think that the teaching of Jesus is too idealistic to be practical. Others are waiting for God to intervene, whether on a um, global or personal um, level. And a lot of people try to live their best, you know, do their best, but in a society which is full of violence and anything but conducive to treating other people as you'd like to be treated, which is one of Jesus' main things. So it's all to I do with the interpretation really, isn't it? And some of us, we're, if we're reading exactly what's in there, may not be as, as confused maybe as if we'd just been taught it oh, right. through someone else. Mm. You also <coughs> state, and it is right on the front of your book too mm -hmm. actually, that Jesus invites us to God's kingdom of heaven right here on earth. Well, that sounds a little bit too amazing. What do you mean by that and how is that possible? Well, I think the... Um the idea of the kingdom or the kingdom has been available for a long time since before Jesus. I think Jesus reinterpreted, um, reinterpreted Moses and brought it down to earth as it were because the Pharisees and people had gone a bit ritualistic and things like that. Yes. So I think it's possible when people choose to follow Jesus and change behaviour which isn't appropriate to living that way um, in the company of other people and it's a way towards fulfillment. So you're saying that this kingdom of heaven, God's kingdom of heaven, is, a, is to do with the way we live and behaviour and we can have that kind of life here on earth. That's yes. what you're saying. Yes. <coughs> You've also said that um, Jesus talked about a society where people could reach their full potential. Mm -hmm. How does that differ to today's world? I mean, unless we live in the third world or somewhere like that, we really do have great opportunities. Well, I think there is the opportunity to develop a Christian culture which is different from all the other cultures around. Um, and I think it's a Jesus talked about us being a family, brothers and sisters, um, so that there's nobody more powerful or important than anybody else. And I think in that kind of environment, um, each individual is valued and can reach their potential, if you like, do their best and for their own advantage and to the best interests of the community, the group that's living this way. You talk a lot about behaviours, relationships, how we should live. What impressed you most during, during your research of, of Jesus' teachings? Um, I think the one about where you resolve conflict or difficulty or, for instance, where I might think that you've stepped out of line. I've got to make sure that I'm not at fault myself. That's from another bit. Um, and we talk about it one on one and if we can't resolve it, we enlist one or two other people to mediate and if that still doesn't work then we go to the whole group. So you're saying mm. we don't do that very well in no, general? I, no, I don't think we do, no. So there's a no. lot of changes. Can, can mm. the teachings of Jesus change the world today that we live in for, for the better? Well, I think they could except we've got to realise that people have the choice. They can choose not to 
And I think Jesus set out the consequences of ignoring or not accepting his invitation. We, mm. we do know a lot of this information that's in, in the Bible, don't we? In fact, we, many of us use some of these things, whether we would describe ourselves as Christians or not. So is it because we know that it comes from the Bible that it works? Or why do we use it anyway? Uh, well, I think it is. it probably works and we use it because it works to a limited extent because it's a bit piecemeal and because everybody doesn't do it. Um, it doesn't make much difference to the structures or lack of structures in the surrounding society. So I think we need to be the city on the hill rather than you in your small corner and I in mine. And, and so you're saying this, the teachings of Jesus is relevant for the world today? Oh yes, yes, I think it's timeless <coughs> and universal. Yes. You, you have made a comment, it's on the back of the book. Uh, why, 